Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Catherine, and today we're going to be talking about modulo. Modulo can help you figure out if one number is divisible by another number or if a number is even or odd. Let's see how this works. We can use modulo to figure out what's left over when one number is divided by another. Essentially, it helps us capture the integer remainder value in division. The syntax looks something like this, where we have one operand, the modulo operator, and then the second operand. Here we would call this n mod m, or n modulo m. Let's try an example. Let's say we had 31 mod 7. The answer to this would be 3 because 7 goes into 31 4 times. If we do 7 times 4, we get 28, and ultimately 31 minus 28 is 3, making 3 our answer. It's the remainder of 31 divided by 7. 31 divided by 7 is ultimately 4, which is how we get 7 times 4 equals 28, and then we do the subtraction and that's how we get that remainder, which is the result of 31 mod 7. We could also do something like 10 mod 2. Here, 2 goes into 10 5 times, and 2 times 5 equals 10. This means the remainder of 10 divided by 2 is 0, and that makes the modulo 0 as well. And going back to our example from before, if we did 31 divided by 7, our answer would be 28 remainder 3. That's our modulo value, 3. It's also interesting to note that in the second example, example B, the modulo was 0 and the remainder was 0. That means we know that 10 is divisible by 2. Let's look at one last example. In this case, we'll do 17 modulo 2. 2 goes into 17 8 times, and so if we go 2 times 8 equals 16, and pull this up here, and then we take this value and subtract it from the first operand, and so 17 minus 16, that equals 1, so that means our remainder overall is 1. And if we did 17 divided by 2, in the end we would get 16 remainder 1. Now since our remainder is not 0, it's 1, 17 must be odd because it's not divisible by 2, it has the remainder 1, not a remainder 0. As you're working with modulo and mod, it's important to remember that mod is about what's left over, what's the remainder. It's not about how many times a number goes into another number. Modulo can also be represented with the percent sign, and we'll see this in a few programming languages coming up. Let's go ahead and try using the modulo operator in code. We'll start off by going to jdoodle and going into the Python 3 editor. JDoodle is a really easy way to write code quickly without firing up an IDE or text editor in command line, so that's why we're using it here. In Python, we are going to print out the results of the operations we were just working with. So that's 31 mod 7, 10 mod 2, and 17 mod 2. So if we go up here, we can go print 31, and we can just do that mod 7, and then we'll go print 10 mod 2, and then we'll go ahead and print 17 mod 2. If we run this, we get 301, which is what we got before on the whiteboard. Now, what if we put something that's not a number in this modulo operation? So, what if we went high equals high the string mod 2? If we try to execute that, we're going to get an error, so we can't do this mod stuff if the inputs are not numbers. Now why is modulo useful? Going off the example from before, let's say we wanted to find out if a number was odd or even. All we would need to do is check if that number mod 2 is 0. So let's say we go num equals 4. We could do an if statement, so if that number is divisible by 2 or if it's even, that means num mod 2 equals 0. And if that is the case, we'll go ahead and print even. And then if that is not the case, we'll print odd. Running this, 
we see we get even. And that's because 4 is divisible by 2, meaning there's no remainder. So 4 mod 2 equals 0, making it even. Now let's change the number to 7. If we execute, we're going to get odd in the console because 7 mod 2 does not equal 0. 7 mod 2 is 1 because 2 goes into 7 three times, but then there's that one remainder. And that's why 7 mod 2, that modulo, is going to return 1 because the remainder is 1. Now, we can do this in other languages too. Let's jump over to Swift and write some more code. The syntax is pretty similar and the idea is the same. We can actually copy and paste these first few lines because they will work in Swift too. So if we copy these, we can go to other languages. In this case, we want to go to Swift, which is up here. We'll delete this stuff, paste in our three lines that work for Python, and here they work in Swift as well. Now, why else is modulo useful? This was hinted a little bit in the previous example, but we can use modulo to find out if a number is divisible by another number. For example, we could find out if a number was divisible by 4 or 6 or 12, etc. To do this in code, we can write something similar to our Python code, but the syntax will be for Swift. To do that, we'll go let num equals 9, so we're making a constant here. Then we'll say if num mod 4 equals 0, then we'll go ahead and print out divisible by Four, because if 9 mod 4 equals 0, then it's divisible by 4, and that division has no remainder. Otherwise, we're going to print not divisible by 4, or not div by 4, to keep it short. Running this, we'll get not divisible by 4 in the console, because 9 is not divisible by 4. 8 is divisible by 4, but 9 mod 4, that's going to give us a 1, because... 4 goes into 9 two times, and then you have that one remainder. If we change this to 8, we'll go ahead and get div by 4 in the console because 8 is directly divisible by 4. So that's it for this video. Be sure to subscribe if you want more technical tutorials and follow me on Instagram for behind the scenes. There are also some freebies in the description box below, and thank you for watching. Happy coding!